I'd like to present my diploma project from a degree in industrial design at the School of Form in Poznan. School of Form is a new university, design university in, in Poland. They introduced me to a design process that is approached by humanistic uh, analysis, as well as engaging the emerging technologies, which I found myself really interested in. I happened to be the first, uh, in the first year to graduate the school. In my diploma, I focused on confronting two extremely different worlds, which is the tradition and the new technologies. As you can see, these ladies, as well as the robots at the right, they make things. They make things that are repetitive and precise. They can also work in the groups to achieve the results faster. I followed a similar logic in my project, but not replacing it and not copying the craft. My main inspiration was an embroidery style deriving from the region around the school in Poland, uh, around Poznań, and it's called snutki. Not many people know how to make it now, so I wanted it to be uh, fancy again for the new generations. The main characteristics of snutki is that after the embroidery style is done, the fabric that is supporting the structure is being cut out, and I followed the rules. As the result, I've created a set of tools and this whole process that allows a cooker robot to weave an abstract stitch inspired by the Snutki technique. At the School of Form, we, have, we are following new ways of learning, and one of them is that each graduate was given a group of students from the second year, and uh, we were cooperating and learning from each other and the prototyping phase I led as a set of workshops that worked out really well. We created prototypes and mock-ups with winding materials. We experimented with carbon fiber, glass fiber and Kevlar, and also built a 3D mock-up of how the tool would look like to just roughly measure dimensions and put it in a 3D program. Then I printed all the tools. Rapid prototyping played a crucial role in the whole process as it made the product testing phase much easier. If something went wrong, I could just simply go back to the program and print it all over again. That's the morphing of how the tools looked like. I discovered that the long neck was prone to snapping, so I simply made it shorter and shorter. And also added, apart from the weaving, that like every tool is passing the carbon fiber and in the process, it's covering it with resin. I also added the function that uh, when the same tool is turning and it differently calibrates it, it can also drill the hole for the supporting structure. And then with another path, turn back and by uh, simply removing a few screws, change the function. Every tool uh, works like Lego bricks. It's all nicely fit together and it's easy to mount it. In total, I've adjusted it 106 times, that's how, how many models I made, but only printed six of them. And the first stitch to be programmed was the running stitch, as it is a base of all embroidery styles. It's very basic. That's how the program looked like. The user simply puts the coordinates of the points, and then the program manages the path itself and creates two paths for the same tool, but with the different calibration. That's a historic photo of the first run of the robot. The path is specified around the nails, but that was simple. So I thought, now it's time to make something more complicated. That's the buttonhole stitch, and it was pretty challenging to be, by, to be done by one robotic arm, as people are doing it with two hands. So I had to change the shape of the uh, tip of the tool to be able to hoop it up and cross the threads during the process. Uh, that's the action, mounting the tool, drilling the holes, generating the path, weaving. I focused mainly on the process and the technology. These are only the examples of how the technology can be used. It can also be used for making an isotropic structure where there's no exact point when it's prone to snapping, as well as for architectural use or product design. I left the program for the next students, like the 
the second year students, they are still doing things with it for their own, uh, for their own projects. And I'm open to collaboration, and I hope there's still many possibilities yet to be discovered for that technology. I would like to show you the video of the robot. I couldn't bring it with me now. My name is Basia Jaman, and this is my final project in industrial design at the School of Form in Poznan. I've been working on a project that combines rules taken from traditional Polish handcrafts with new technologies. Inspired by a local embroidery style in robotics, the result is a set of tools that can weave an abstract stitch with a robotic arm. By using carbon fiber covered in resin, the structure sets after the process. The journey begins in the digital environment where the form is created in Rhino. When the model is ready, it is sent to a 3D printer. Printing of each part of the tool may take from 3 to 5 hours depending on the chosen quality. After each piece is removed from its supports, it is time to assemble it and screw it to the KUKA robot. The tool is calibrated by setting zero points. The program which defines its movements is then input using Grasshopper. The Dremel function of the tool is selected and the holes of the supporting nails are drilled. Only when the nails are fitted is it time for the dry run. Carbon or glass fiber thread is delicately loaded into the mechanism of the tool. Any adjustments can be made and a flexible program will take them into account. The resin is mixed using carefully set proportions before being fitted to the tool. The stitches can then be woven and left to dry. This has proven to be a versatile process which leaves many possibilities open for exploration in the future.